previous videos, we took a look at how to select and manipulate elements using jQuery. But the real power comes from events. In the next couple of videos, we're going to take a look at the utilities that jQuery provides for handling events. Now up until this point, we've seen how to select elements and how to manipulate them. But those two things alone aren't really enough to do anything particularly interesting because we need to actually trigger those actions to happen. JavaScript in the browser is an event-based environment, which means that our pieces of code are triggered by certain events. For instance, if we want something to happen when we click something, there's a click event that will trigger our code to run, or if they type something or press a button. So all of our code is really triggered by certain events. So we're going to be looking at the utilities that jQuery offers to make event handling easier. In our example, we just have this page with uh, eight different boxes here. We'll take a look at the code. So we just have this unordered list, and each box is a list item, and we've given a separate class name to each one so we can select them very easily. And they're just floated and styled to look like big blue boxes. Then at the bottom of the page, we include our jQuery script, and then we have our event script, which is where we'll have our code for this example. So let's flip over to this event script. So we're going to be combining some of the things from the previous lessons. So the first thing I want to show you is the bind method. So the bind method is called on a jQuery object. So we're going to start with box number one. So we select it with the class box one, and we can call bind. Now bind takes two arguments, the first of which is the name of the event that we want to listen for. So in this case, we're going to listen for a click event. Then the second argument is a function that will be executed when the click event is registered on our element. So we'll just type in an anonymous function here. And inside of this function, we'll just do something simple like alert that we clicked box one. So flipping back to our code, click refresh, and I'm going to go ahead and click on box number one here. Click, and we get an alert. So that's pretty simple. So let's take a look and copy this code for box two. So this time we're going to look at box two, and then alert that we clicked box two. But jQuery gives us a nice shortcut. Instead of using bind with the first argument click, it actually gives us a set of shortcut methods. So we can actually just call dot click, and pass the click method the single function. So this click function is exactly like calling bind with click as our first argument. So to demonstrate that, we'll refresh, and if I click one, we get clicked box one, and if we click two, we get clicked box number two. Now let's go down to box number three. So we'll get box number three, and we'll do the click handler again. Let's say we want to actually do something with box three, like change its CSS background. So we'll grab box three, and call CSS, this is like we did before, and we'll change the background to 8C0. So we'll click back here and refresh, and I'm going to go ahead and click on number three here, and now we get a nice green background. But this function has a special variable called this, and this is the HTML element that was actually clicked. So instead of having to reselect the item, we can actually just pass this to the dollar sign jQuery function and call CSS on it. So flipping back, and we click again, and we'll see that it has the exact same effect. Now this is particularly useful if our click handler was attached to multiple boxes and we didn't, and we needed to know which one was actually clicked. Now we need to wrap it in this jQuery wrapper because this is not a jQuery wrapped element, it's just a normal HTML element. So if you want to do anything with jQuery, you need to wrap it in the dollar sign function, or the jQuery function. So let's take a look at another handler we can use, and we'll say dot box four. And we'll listen for double click, so we'll say bind dbl click function. And in this one, we'll call this, and we'll change the text on it. So we'll say text is double clicked. So again, we're just using a different event called double click. So this is dbl click. So flipping back to our page, and we double click number four here. And we can see that it double clicked. 
And double click is another element that has a shortcut function. So instead of calling bind with double click, we could just call dot dbl click and pass the function as a singular argument. And now we've seen how to use bind to listen for click and double click. In part two, we'll take a look at some more events that jQuery provides. Thank you.